Thanks. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, and thank you. Just a quick disclaimer. Um, this is our namesake, the Cassini Space Probe. I don't know if any of you are uh, astronomy nuts, but uh, Cassini was um, sent out to Saturn. And uh, about the 28th of April, it took a sort of uh, a perilous journey through the rings of Saturn, the first time that was ever made. And, um, you know, at any point, some uh, icy rock particle could have smashed it, but it managed to come out the other side, much to the joy of all the people at NASA. And, um, you know, I think there's probably some analogies between the perilous journey that a lot of base metal companies have had over the last couple of years. So, um, you know, as our namesake, uh, we're, we're still uh, actually progressing well. And, and Last year when we spoke at this conference, I, I talked about our uh, West Arunta Zinc project, and that really is a reflection of where the base metals market was at the time. And uh, this year I'm really going to talk to you again about our primary project, the West Musgrove project, that's really progressing well through what is uh, still a reasonably uh, flat spot in the base metal market. If I can change the slide. So, who is Cassini? Cassini's got the largest uh, nickel and copper project, undeveloped nickel copper project in Australia. It's a sulphide. Um, we're free carry through to a decision to mine after a uh, three-stage $36 million joint venture with Oz Minerals. It's a different beast than a lot of the nickel sulphide projects in Australia. It's open pit, so the mineralisation is shallow, so it's a scalable um, open pit operation with a low C1 cash cost and a long mine life. All those key strategic factors that we know makes this a really valuable asset. Not only are these de the development assets, but there's significant exploration upside within the project area that we've demonstrated as recently as sort of uh, uh, late last year. So there's, there's a great development opportunity, but significant opportunity for us to keep adding to this uh, project. By doing the joint venture with Oz Minerals, we've decoupled the project from the day-to-day -day, uh, nickel price and copper price, but we are very leveraged to that going forwards, and you know, it is a great time to be a, a funded base metals developer, probably better than being a base metals producer at this point in time. So a little bit about us. Um, reasonably tight capital structure, 276 million shares on issue, $2.4 million in the bank, and because we're currently running this joint venture with Oz Minerals. We've got a, quite a low cash requirement. Um, we've got some good shareholders in there, Macca and GR, and um, uh, have been in there really since sort of April 15. They like the project. We're using their expertise and leverage to assist us through this development phase. Both of those guys are really considered uh, best of breed in their particular areas, being mining services and process engineering. We've also had some good share appreciation over the last 12 months as, as the base metal climate has been improving and as we've also de-risked this project from a funding perspective going forwards. So a little bit about our project portfolio. Obviously our, our primary um, project is the West Musgrove project. It's a large scale opportunity. Uh, it's, it's always going to be a big project for a small company. We had hoped if the market was more buoyant, we could have got to the end of a DFS ourselves. But we've been pragmatic about this, and we've got in a joint venture partner who is uh, uh, assisting us with this, and that project goes on. You can see from the scale there, you know, it's not a small deposit. There's 203 million tonnes uh, in, the, in the resource at Nebo and Babel, 830,000 tonnes of contained nickel at Nebo, and 850,000 tonnes of contained copper. 15, uh, 13 kilometres up the road at the Sukkoth deposit, there's another 936,000 tonnes of contained copper in, once again, a, a very shallow mineralisation. Um, the Sukkoth resource is currently inferred, and, the, and we believe that there's significant opportunity to increase that from the current 156 million tonnes to, uh, to significantly more than that. And as I said, there's a lot more exploration upside. We've also got some other projects that we own 100% that I won't really be covering off on today. Um, but we'd be happy to talk to you about the booth. The Mount Squires Gold Project, it's adjacent to the West Musgrove Project. There's been historical drilling with some good numbers. Um, once again, it's, it's a regional scale type opportunity with a large prospective horizon of about 50 kilometres. Also in Western Australia, we have the uh, West Arunta, which is a sedimentary zinc uh, target. We did some drilling there in uh, 2016 found some good anomalous zinc numbers and there's some more work to be done following that up, which we hope will happen later in the year. 
So just a little bit about the West Musgrove, just to give you some context. It is out right near the West Australian, Northern Territory, South Australian border. And you can see, uh, even though it is out there, there's a pretty good standard road. That's, a, that's the Great Central uh, Highway near Warburton. There's an Aboriginal community about uh, 30 kilometres away with an airstrip. Um, we actually get mobile phone coverage on site, which is a bit of a bonus. Uh, there's some camp infrastructure there. So this was the original exploration camp uh, that was put in there by BHP, who we acquired the project off in 2014 gives us a very solid base to uh, run our operations from out there. The project itself um, is quite a large sort of 2,500 square kilometre package of what we believe is the most prospective uh, ground out in this region. The, the West Musgrave is one of the last frontiers in terms of uh, exploration in Western Australia. We currently have about a 40 kilometre mineralised trend starting at uh, One Tree Hill, which I'll talk about, in the southwest, where we've had some good drilling results in the past sort of six months, right through. These are the Nebo Babel deposits. They're about a kilometre apart. This is the Sukkoth uh, deposit that we delineated in late 2015. That's about 13 kilometres. And then we've got mineralised hits up as far to the northeast as uh, sewers. So the previous owner, BHP, went through this area on very broad drill spacings, identified a number of mineralised hits um, that were below their project threshold, but really do present great opportunities for us going forwards. And the key is really unlocking the potential of those by establishing a, uh, some development infrastructure at Nebo Babel. Just to give you some uh, idea of the scale, as I said, uh, the West Musgrove project, there aren't too many open pit nickel sulphide mines around. Mount Keith is probably the, the closest uh, analogue in Australia. They tend to be more modest grade, but obviously the mining cost is a lot lower than an underground operation, and that's what makes it work. Uh, we're very fortunate that not only is the mining cost low because of the geometry of the ore body, but we also get significant byproduct credits. So the, the, the geology is there's a, it's really one to one nickel to copper. So for every pound of nickel we produce, we produce a pound of copper. And we also produce some, uh, some, P, some PGEs as a byproduct credit, as well as some cobalt and some gold. So all those position it as a very low uh, C1 cash cost. Um, and some work that was done previously by Wood Mackenzie for us positioned it on about sort of the cusp of the first and second quartile. So, as I said, long mine life, large scale, and you can see why um, it's important to have a funding partner. So just the joint venture with Oz Minerals. Uh, this was consummated in August last year. Uh, it's a three-stage process. We're currently in the first stage, stage one. That commenced in October last year. That entails what we're calling further scoping studies. So Cassini came out with a scoping study in April 15. Um, we were very cognizant of the capital requirement at the back end, being a small company, so we really looked at development scenarios uh, that tried to minimise the capital expenditure. Not so much of an issue for Oz, they've got a little bit more money in the bank than we have. Um, but so this first stage really revolves around uh, reducing any of the technical risk around the metallurgy, but also revisiting some of those studies and looking at what is the optimal processing size or scenario to take into the PFS. Um, Cassini is the, uh, sorry, and then stage two, we expect that uh, Oz will be in a position to make a decision in October, November this year. Stage two starts to be a bit more of a meaningful spend. $15 million towards the PFS, DFS, and $4 million spent on regional exploration. They'll have a period of 18, a maximum 18 months to spend that. Cassini will remain the operator at that point, and at the end of that stage, they will uh, earn a 51% equity. The final stage, stage three, is the, is the DFS, um, and it makes a lot of sense for uh, Oz to come in and manage the DFS, so the engineering pre-construction pre, uh, pre, um, phase of the project. We'll continue to um, manage the exploration, so, and at the end of that, they have the opportunity of earning 70% after that a full $36 million expenditure. They're a high-quality partner. They've got a lot of financial grunt. They're very aligned with us in terms of bringing the project into production. Um, and so far, the stage one um, is progressing extremely well and uh, all is looking good. So just a little bit about the work that's going on. Firstly, at Nebo Babel, uh, as I said, the metallurgy is, is a large component of this work. Cassini did some met work <coughs> excuse me, in, um, as part of the scoping in uh, 2015. We're really going to that next level to get an increased confidence around the metallurgy. We're getting a much better spatial representativity uh, or representation of samples through the ore body. 
we're looking and matching uh, the, um, the sample grade with what we believe the runner mine grade will be and looking at optimising a lot of that uh, flow work uh, that's been done. We're also doing a resource uh, extension drilling program, which uh, I'll talk to, which is just finishing this week, um, with results out probably in the next three or four weeks. And then we're updating a lot of the studies around energy, infrastructure and logistics, and all that will lead into a, an updated sort of mine optimisation. The other work we've been doing is, is, is really, I guess, just demonstrating the exploration upside of the project, and we've drilled some holes at One Tree Hill, which is at that southwestern end of the project, with some great results. Um, great opportunity, it's, it was only the fifth hole into that project, so there's a lot of upside going forwards. And then at the Sukkoth deposit, you know, Sukkoth has the capability really of adding significantly to the development scenario. It can potentially extend the mine life from the original 12 to 15 years, probably add another sort of 15 to 20 years to the mine life. It's a shallow, um, large uh, zone of mineralisation. It's open, it needs more drilling and we think we can increase the size of that resource significantly. And uh, as I was saying, it's only about 13 kilometres away from Nebo Babel, so it becomes a very low capital intensity copper project. This is the extension drill program at the moment. What we're really looking at doing is just um, one of the unique characteristics about this ore body is a lot of the higher grade nickel sits on top of the ore body, so sort of grading about 1% nickel or above and also 1% copper. Um, there's some open parts of that uh, resource and also some uh, areas of discontinuity between the existing drill holes. So the aim is really not about increasing the resource but show, proving that continuity, continuity and adding some high grade tonnes that would come early in the mine plan and add to the NPV. Um, and that program's just finishing and assays will be in the next couple of weeks. Just a little bit on that exploration work that was done at One Tree Hill. Um, photo of the drill core. Cassini drilled this hole, uh, generated by an off-hole conductor from an old uh, western mining hole. Missed a screaming conductor here by about five metres. We think there's a fault that's bordering that off. Went back late last year and really got a, a great intersection at 34 metres at about a percent copper, including a, a 3.2 metre massive sulphide zone. It's only the fifth hole into this project, into this prospect area. Uh, it's open in most directions and really is screaming to be followed up, which we hope we'll do in sort of Q4 this year. Just to give a little bit, this is not a cobalt project, so we're not changing horses, but we do have significant exposure to cobalt. In the Nebo Babel resource, there's about 30,000 tonnes of cobalt. Uh, in the MET work that we did, it showed that the cobalt reported to the nickel concentrate at a level that was high enough to get through the threshold for payability. Um, we went back and had a look at the, uh, so apart from the, the, the cobalt within the known resource that we know we can liberate and, and realise some value for, we also went back and reviewed, there's a 75,000 metre air core uh, drill database that came with the project. We've gone back and reviewed some of that and there are a number of other high grade mineralised hits that out, uh, high grade cobalt hits that sit outside the existing resource. So it's very early stages, but there's a, a fair bit of work to, and a fair bit of work to be done, but we do have some good exposure to cobalt and the prices that we used in our scoping study were probably half what they were today. So this is the work program. As I said, we're managing this first phase and I think the thing to take from that, I've actually, there's a, a detailed text-rich copy of this that's been lodged on the ASX. Um, the, the thing to take from that timetable is there's a lot going on and a lot will be landed by the end of September. So this phase of work will all be complete by the end of September. Some key dates really, I guess, are the assays from the, uh, the, the high grade drilling program that come out in the next sort of four weeks. We hope to finish the metallurgy program by the end of June with results and a report flowing probably sort of, you know, mid to late July. Um, and then updated studies around a lot of the other uh, components leading to the position where we believe Oz will be in a spot to make a decision as to the progression to the next stage uh, in October, November. And here's the opportunity, really. I think what we've done is be able to progress the project through a really flat spot in the, in the commodity cycle and, and, and some tough capital markets. We've reduced our funding risk, so we've got a big, strong partner on board who's very aligned with us. Um, we're, we're operating that project. It's great. It keeps our technical guys uh, busy and they're very well regarded by Oz. It also keeps our capital requirement low. Um, and we think as we go through this process and these results come out, um, there'll be uh, a more transparent uh, transference, I guess, of the, of the project value and opportunity back into our equity. So 
um, you know, I think we're really well leveraged as we progress through this process and, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity to, uh, to, to get involved in what will be a reasonably short period of time over the next six months as we go through this. So I'd love to uh, have you at the booth. We've got Greg Miles, our technical director here as well. If you've got any further questions, um, we'd be happy to talk to you. So thanks for your time. Thanks, Richard. Thank you.